I'm Lydie Hoyk, and this is my roasted cauliflower date and prosciutto pizza. I can't wait to show you how to make it. I'm so excited to be working on this partnership with Food52 and Uni. The Uni Pizza Oven makes it easy to make incredibly delicious pizza in your own backyard. Uni Pizza Ovens are portable, versatile, and come in two sizes, so it's really easy to find the one that works for you. You can't beat homemade pizza right out of the oven, so I'm really excited to get started on this one. All right, let's get started. This is one of my favorite pizza recipes to make in the fall because it's got all these really nice sort of autumnal flavors and it's just a really fun recipe to make outside on a beautiful fall day. The first thing we're gonna do is get started on the crust. So we're gonna need a really big bowl, a packet of yeast, some granulated sugar, and a wooden spoon. I'm just gonna give that a gentle mix. Then I'm gonna add a cup and a half of warm water. You want it to be 105 to 110 degrees. You want it to be pretty warm to the touch but not really, really hot and then gently give it a stir just to sort of break up any large clumps. And we're just gonna set it aside for five to 10 minutes just until we see bubbles on the surface of the water. And that's how we know that the yeast is alive and the dough's gonna rise. So you can see now that there are little bubbles on the surface and there's just a little activity under the surface. So I'm gonna give this one more little stir and then I'm gonna add two tablespoons olive oil and two teaspoons kosher salt. And then I'm gonna give one more gentle stir. Always wanna be gentle with yeast. And don't worry, the oil won't be totally mixed in, but once we add the flour, the mixture will become nice and smooth. And now I'm gonna add four cups bread flour, and I'm just gonna sort of stir as I add. And then I'm gonna stir just until this forms sort of a rough, craggy dough and it'll be really wet and sticky. All right, we don't wanna over mix in the bowl, so once the dough has come together, I'm gonna to transfer it to a floured surface like a big board or you can use the table or your countertop. And with pizza, we always wanna make sure our hands and board are floured. Flour is your friend and will keep the dough from sticking in every step of this recipe. All right. I'm gonna dump it out. So basically when I'm kneading, I'm gonna bring the dough towards me and then push back with the palms of my hands. And then I'm gonna rotate it and do the same thing. And we're gonna keep repeating this process for about eight to 10 minutes. Every so often, I'm just gonna make sure that my hands and my board are really nice and floured to keep the dough from sticking. And the more we do this, the softer the dough is gonna become. I think some people are really intimidated to make pizza dough themselves, but one of the reasons I love this particular recipe is that the dough is really forgiving and it only takes about two hours to rise, so you can easily make it the same day you plan to make the pizza. All right, so this looks good. The dough is nice and smooth, so I'm just gonna sort of form it into a round shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna grab a mixing bowl and I'm just gonna brush the bowl all over with olive oil and this will just help the dough to keep from sticking to the sides of the bowl. Perfect. Set that aside. We're gonna put the dough right in the bowl and I'm gonna brush the top of the dough with olive oil to prevent it from drying out as the dough rises. Great. And then I'm just gonna cover it with a clean dish towel. And we're gonna set this aside for 90 minutes for the first rise and we'll come back and check on it. So the dough has been resting for 90 minutes at room temperature. And look, it's doubled in size, beautiful. And now we're gonna cut it into three equal pieces and let it rise again, and then we'll be ready to make our pizza. So I'm gonna flour the board again, and we'll flour our hands too. And then I'm just gonna dump the dough gently onto the board. Look how beautiful that is, and you can see all the little air bubbles. And one thing I wanna say is, after the dough has had all this time to rise, we never want to smash it back down and take all the air out of it. So you always wanna be gentle with the dough as we're working with it from here on out. So I'm gonna cut the dough using a bench scraper into three roughly equal portions. And do not worry if they're not exactly equal. The pizza will be delicious. They may not be exactly the same size, but no one will notice. And it's really hard to make them exactly the same size when you're just eyeballing it. And now we wanna end up with a nice round ball before the dough rises again. So all I'm gonna do is kind of fold these oblong pieces in on each other to get it closer to a circle and you can sort of lift the edges and we're gonna have all the seams on the bottom. So once we do that, I'll turn it over 
And what I'm gonna do is move the dough with my hands, and as I'm doing it, I'm lightly squeezing to kind of shape the dough into a ball, and I'm just gonna keep it moving and pull it towards myself in a nice circular motion. And that should help the seams on the bottom start to close. All right, so there's one. And I'm gonna put it on this sheet pan. And we'll move on to our second one. And like anything, the more you do this, the more comfortable you'll be and the easier it'll become. And I'm just gonna oil these pizza crusts one more time just to keep them from drying out as they rise for the second time. Just brush them generously. I'm gonna cover this again with the dish towel and we'll just set this aside for half an hour to an hour to let it rise one more time. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start prepping the cauliflower. For the cauliflower, we're just doing a really nice, simple roasted cauliflower. I started with a medium large head of cauliflower, about two and a half pounds, and I've just chopped it into florets that are about an inch. I have them on a sheet pan. I'm gonna drizzle with about a quarter cup of olive oil. And this is a really nice, generous drizzle of olive oil because this is a pizza topping. You wanna make sure it gets really nice and caramelized. Perfect. And then I'm gonna do a teaspoon of kosher salt and just a few pinches of freshly ground black pepper. And then, since my hands are the best tool, I'm just gonna toss to make sure the cauliflower is really evenly coated, and that's gonna make sure it roasts beautifully in the oven. All right, perfect. I'm gonna roast these at 425 for 30 to 35 minutes, tossing once or twice throughout, just until the cauliflower is nice and golden brown. All right, this cauliflower is beautiful, nice and golden brown and caramelized, so I'm just gonna set this aside to cool while I get the uni fired up. For this recipe, I want the oven to be at 750 degrees, and what's great is you can see on the screen in the front, you can watch the temperature as it rises. This model of the uni is particularly great because it's multi-fuel, so you can use wood, you can use charcoal, and today I'm using the gas burner, which just adds to the overall ease of this recipe. The uni's been heating up for a few minutes and I'm just gonna double check the temperature with the uni infrared thermometer to make sure we're where we wanna be. Perfect. And while it comes up those last few degrees, I'm gonna start stretching the pizza dough. And now I'm just gonna start with my fingers. I'm gonna start pressing outwards, leaving about an inch crust and turning as I go. And just with gentle but firm pressure, pushing the edges of the dough out to expand the size of the circle. At this point, the pizza has about doubled in size, and now I'm gonna start lifting it and stretching it using the help of gravity. So what I'm gonna do is gently lift the pizza dough and get my knuckles up, and then, <laughs> this is sort of the fun part too, just sort of rotate and spin, and you can see as you spin it where the pizza dough has gotten thinner and where it still needs a stretch. And if you're having trouble stretching the pizza dough that way, you can always put it down and kind of fake it on the board and pull it out a little bit. And again, it's easy to forget, but we always wanna keep flour moving under the pizza because what we don't want to happen is sliding the pizza into the oven and have it stick to the board. Perfect. I think we're ready for some toppings. First up is the cheese. Today I'm using Fontina Val Dasta cheese, which is a really nice Italian, mild, but sort of nutty shredded cheese that's gonna be the backdrop for these really beautiful autumnal flavors. Beautiful. Next, got the roasted cauliflower. Then I'm gonna do some chopped pitted dates. These are a little sticky, so just break them apart. Sprinkle them evenly over the cauliflower. And then the prosciutto. This is thinly sliced prosciutto, and I've just cut the slices in half or in quarters if they were particularly large. And I'm going to arrange these over the pizza. And once the pizza goes into the oven, the prosciutto is gonna become really nice and crispy, and it's gonna break when you slice it. I actually like to cover most of the pizza because as the prosciutto crisps up, all that flavor gets down onto the other toppings. Perfect. Do one more piece. And then the final touch is just a little bit of fresh sage, which gives this a really nice fall aroma. Sage and cauliflower, I think, are a match made in heaven. Now I've got the toppings on. I'm gonna give the peel a little shake and just sneak a little bit of flour under here. And that's just gonna ensure that the pizza slides off the peel really easily when we launch it into the oven. Thank you. 
Look how great this looks. I am thrilled. And I love that because the uni gets so hot, you've got this beautiful brown crust and the toppings are perfectly cooked. Mm. That is so good. The roasted cauliflower with the crispy prosciutto and that hint of sweetness from the dates is perfection. Mmm. Mmm. This is one of my favorite pizzas and I know you're gonna love it too. You can get the recipe on food52.com.